Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. It's 4 p.m. on Monday, the 7th of August. So if you're watching this uh, later on this evening on the replay, uh, be sure to go to weather.gov to get the latest weather information regarding the severe weather uh, tonight, because obviously what you're seeing here is going to be dated. And if you're looking at this at seven o'clock, the radars and satellites are going to be uh, old. So I've got the wide satellite view so you can see the thunderstorms with the lightning strikes on the visible satellite. We've got this upper low that is strengthening uh, in, uh, s in southeastern Canada uh, and the deep trough that goes with it. And of course, ahead of it, we've seen a very strong southerly flow. Uh, dew points that climbed up into the 70s. We had a warm front go through during the morning hours, and that's pushed its way up into southeastern New England. So there were a lot of areas, especially inland of the coast, that were able to uh, accomplish a lot of daytime heating today to make the atmosphere even more unstable than it already is. And here's a close-up of the northeast, and you see all the lightning strikes that are going on from western New York uh, down through central Pennsylvania uh, into west northwestern Virginia and West Virginia. And now you're just coming into the scene here uh, in western North Carolina. The Storm Prediction Center at the moment, this is as of 4 p.m. Eastern time, has five tornado watches that are up. The latest tornado watch, actually there's one missing here for some reason. There are actually two severe thunderstorm watches across Alabama and Georgia and then we've got one two three four no five there are five tornado watches here the latest tornado watch uh is up there it goes now it's back on the screen the latest tornado watch was just put up uh about an hour ago for eastern Pennsylvania and the western counties of New Jersey uh, it seems as if the forecast that the uh, Storm Prediction Center put out today is working out fairly well in terms of where we're seeing the most intense storms and where we're seeing the concentration of tornado watches. And it's pretty much inside this area of enhanced risk uh, that uh, runs up through the western half of New Jersey uh, into the Catskills and parts of southern New York. The slight risk gets to about New York City and the Hudson Valley west of the Hudson River. And then we go to marginal risk east of there, uh, where by the time these storms reach there, it'll be after 8 o'clock. So I imagine they're going to lose some intensity. Nonetheless, there's still the chance that there could be an isolated severe thunderstorm there. So we're kind of at the th uh, in the thick of it right now in terms of what is going on. And just to give you an idea, this is the radar uh, loop as of 4 p.m. We've got two tornado warnings that popped up there in northeastern, in, in, well, it's in nor the northern eastern quarter of Pennsylvania, west of I-81, and you can go to weather.gov to get the specifics for that, and, and look at all the severe thunderstorm warnings that are up from Pennsylvania down into western Maryland. There's at least half a dozen severe or more severe thunderstorm warnings there into northwestern Virginia, so these will be moving into the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area before too long. We've got a bunch of flash flood warnings that are up in northern West Virginia and some more severe thunderstorm warnings through that state, and then a little bit of a break in southwestern Virginia, uh, at least as of 4 p.m. Eastern time, and then you've got another bunch of severe thunderstorm warnings uh, in western North Carolina, uh, leftover flash flood warning in two counties in eastern Tennessee, and then running through north Georgia and into northern Alabama. All of this is moving to the east, uh, so uh, much of it is going to hold up until about 7 or 8 o'clock, and then by that time, as the storms start to move in that air, into that area of marginal risk that we, we showed you, uh, we'll probably see uh, those storms begin to weaken some. And always remember that when it comes with thunderstorms, when thunderstorms are in the forecast, it doesn't necessarily mean that your particular spot will get the worst of it, or you might wind up in some sort of a hole where you don't get much of anything. Uh, and there are gaps in here where there's not a whole lot happening. Uh, the th there's, you know, they're small gaps, but they're gaps nonetheless. So uh, you know, it, it's never a 100% guarantee during the summertime when we're dealing with situations like this that everybody gets clobbered. Uh, but it's important to recognize that the risk is there, which is what the severe, why the severe storm, uh, the storm prediction center 
uh, that's what it's there for, to point out where the risks are and where the highest probability of severe weather uh, is going to be. So just bear that in mind. And we're, we, we have an elevated tornado risk of 10%, which you don't see too often in the east, from eastern Kentucky to south central Pennsylvania. 5% risk runs uh, all the way up uh, into south central New York State and western New Jersey and eastern Pennsylvania. And there's a 2% risk to the east of that that gets just about to New York City and runs down the coast uh, into southeastern Virginia. So let's just run through really quick a couple of models. I've got the NAM three kilometer model. This is actually uh, the new one that's just coming out now at 4 p.m. And uh, you see how it handles these showers and storms. It sharpens up this line that's moving across West Virginia and Maryland and southern Pennsylvania. And this is at 9 p.m. And you notice that here's where we start to see the storms just sort of peter out. Uh, a couple of other downpours fire up during the overnight over Long Island and southeastern New England. On the southern tail of this, uh, it's picked up on the thunderstorms that are in eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, and northern Georgia. But it doesn't seem to be doing justice to what actually is on the radar. The radar seems... Uh, to show uh, much more than what the uh, three kilometer NAM is showing. And if we uh, take a look at the HRRR, I think here too it's probably underdone to a large degree. Uh, but uh, the HRRR wants to kind of hold on to those storms a little longer. This is at 8 o'clock when they're moving into western New Jersey, and then they start to fade a bit, although another cell, big cell cluster, forms in southern New Jersey and moves out to the east uh, between. Uh, say 10 and 11 o'clock tonight. So again, the risk is there. Uh, it's a fairly high probability that you're going to see a th uh, something out of this and also a high probability that uh, many areas are going to have to deal with severe thunderstorms as they go by, but there will be spots that wind up uh, getting less and getting less or nothing is a good thing. I always tell people that the ones that complain about the fact that you, that there's thunderstorms in the forecast and they didn't happen and my response to that well is well I'm sorry you didn't get the the, the uh, destruction and the tragedy you were looking for but there's another system in two or three days you might have better luck with that one so there you go so here's the GFS which actually fires up those storms in su central New Jersey down to eastern North Car uh, south southeastern Virginia uh, and uh, eastern North Carolina northeastern North Carolina uh, this is at 8 o'clock tonight, and the global models have done a better job than the short-term models. They pull out. Tomorrow we'll see some improvement, uh, but we're going to leave the possibility that there could be a shower or thunderstorm in southeastern and southern New England down to about Long Island uh, because of the upper trough going by. I don't think it's going to be any big deal. I think there's a, there's a marginal risk. Or an isolated severe thunderstorm but that should just about do it wednesday looks fine should be a decent day warm day the humidity will be down uh, actually tomorrow the humidity is going to ease a bit and it should ease a bit more on wednesday and then we have another cold front with another disturbance arriving on thursday and that could produce and i think it's going to be another one of these warm front cold front combinations like we had with this one uh, with the rain that fell last night and early this morning in, in many areas well that's probably going to happen again uh, early on Thursday, and then it moves on out. So we'll throw in the chance that there could be some downpours and maybe a few thunderstorms with this. And then after that goes by, it looks like we'll dry out for Friday into Saturday, and then it looks like maybe another cold front arrives for Saturday evening. So we're still on this train of one system after another after another. Uh, we're going to uh, be uh, live tonight at 7.35 p.m. on the Joe and Joe Weather Show. Uh, so we'll have all the fresh radars and satellites, and we'll let you know what's going on, and we'll take a look at the rest of the week ahead as well as the long range. So mark it down. We'll see you at 735.